Hi guys, Marcus here from MLW Creative and I just wanted to thank everyone who has subscribed to my YouTube channel so far. Uh, we have reached the 60,000 subscriber mark and it's really been an amazing two years to get to this point uh, in my YouTube channel. So nearly two years ago I started this YouTube channel uh, not expecting anything at all really uh, I just wanted to put my artwork out and see if it would get any attention online and uh, it's now grown to 60,000 subscribers in the last two years which is an amazing amazing achievement uh, I ha really have to uh, thank every subscriber and my patrons for making this channel as big as it is so looking forward uh, once I hit 100,000 subscribers, I am planning to do some live streaming on YouTube uh, where you can then see me working on a creature in real time so that you can hopefully pick up some ideas or inspiration from what you see uh, on screen. Meanwhile, every 10,000 subscribers, I've decided that I'm going to do a artist commentary video on past creations that I've created in my timeless videos and they will be included every 10,000 milestone. Uh, it's just something different to the or the normal ZBrush to Photoshop time lapse with music. This one will have my artist commentary about the creation that I created and it will also be accompanied by some music in the background and the and a little bit of time lapse but not as fast as the normal ones. So the video that is accompanying this intro is the Spawn Bust Artist Commentary. Uh, I chose this one because Spawn uh, Bust was one of my favorite images that I created about a year ago. And I just wanted to share with you my thoughts uh, whilst I uh, show the time lapse video in the background. This video can actually be found on my ArtStation Marketplace and other stores online where you can get the artist commentary video plus the actual full length timeline or time yeah timeline of the video uh, with music accompanied in the meantime please keep watching my videos keep sharing keep liking keep subscribing and i will hopefully hit that 100 mark which is the goal at this point and after that we'll we'll continue on and and, and grow even bigger uh, again, I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers and my Patreons for helping build this, this channel to what it is today. And let's, let's carry on. So, without further ado, grab a coffee and let's get into it. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this artist walkthrough on how I created Spawn, uh, the concept using ZBrush and Photoshop, taken from my YouTube archive collection. Uh, this was a very quick sculpt, and to begin with, I use, used a head plane tool, which you can find inside of ZBrush under Lightbox, uh, under Projects, and you can find a female and male head tool. I decided to use the, the male version and the first thing I needed to do was to actually take away a lot of the detail that was on the original head plane model so I dynameshed it uh, to a low res and started sculpting using the clay build up brush and some smooth brush a trim dynamic as well trying to get that iconic spawn mask head look that he has and uh, this went through quite a few alterations uh, as you can see now I, I at this stage I've completely <clears throat> changed the shape of the head and I'm using some very basic tools to or, or brushes to get that shape and silhouette looking right uh, using the dam standard to cut in and and break out some more of those strong forms 
around the neckline and chin. And this is actually quite an easy sculpt to, to create. I really did enjoy making this one because I'm a big fan of the Spawn films, uh, Todd McFarlane film, as well as the concepts and the comic books that people have created for it. Uh, he it, it's it's possibly one of my favorite cre creatures or characters in comic book uh, form basically it's just got a really nice design to it and now i've just added some eyes using a sphere and i'm starting to block out more of a, a head shape thinking like this is kind of like a mask but a very closely uh fitting mask on his face so it's kind of like well in in the comic books it's his, it's his actual skin is exoskin so uh, i had to try and keep that in mind and bring out some of those more skeletal uh, skull shapes as well because it's not just a mask it's going to be his actual face and i'm just playing around trying to get using the move tool constantly trying to get a nice dome shape going on on his head now i only sculpted the bust for this one uh, I, I moved down the neck a little bit just to give it a bit more uh, to play with when it's sculpting but i only went down as far as the neckline uh, the rest of it was actually painted in photoshop later on uh, i do intend to actually see this one through someday maybe start a new one and create a full body spawn character uh, but uh, that will be in the near future or later on down the line and uh, now i'm just trying to shape out some more of his head i dynameshed again but i up raised it uh raised the resolution of the dynamesh a bit more so i can get more detail when i'm sculpting as well as my brushes are going to start to become smaller and smaller as the details come closer and closer to finish so right now just using a, a clay builder brush sort of a very light touch trying to i don't want to break the forms now that i've created so i'm trying to just add to them instead of um, destroying them i decided to add some eyelids by duplicating the sphere that was the eye and then just sculpting some very rudimentary eyelids uh, top and bottom I find this an easier way to create eyelids rather than creating the top one first and then the bottom one afterwards. If you just duplicate the eyeball and you, you like the placement of your eyeball, you just duplicate it and then you can sculpt over the top of it. And you'll quickly uh, be able to create a, an, uh, eyelids for your character. Just using a dam standard now to dig in and, and detail some of that face, some of those lines on the face. It's not perfect at the moment because we're still working a very low res, but uh, it just helps me to visualize where those main lines are going to be on the uh, character's face later on. All in all, this is uh, quite a long uh, video in the real time, but for this purposes, I've actually sped the time time up quite a bit. So don't feel like you you're seeing this as fast as it is uh, in real time this actually took quite a while to kind of get to grips with how this face is going to to, to work with this character so uh, when you watch time lapse videos especially if you watch my own time lapse videos on youtube just remember that those videos are sped up and cut up and uh, what you you'll find is that i uh, i will spend quite a lot of time per model to try and get it looking nice and then uh, speed it up in the time lapse but I find some people's work that they've tried to mimic mine uh, as inf as a inspiration that I think they're 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 going too fast rather than slowing down and taking their time with the model. But if you watch the long form video of this, you'll find you'll see how long it takes uh, to actually create this to create this concept. So I'm still going around, moving, uh, pinching blocking out some of these shapes some more this was quite an easy sculpt because it didn't have a mouth or a nose and uh, i find those sort of sculpts to be really enjoyable because mouths and nose can really take a long time to get right 
Uh, it also takes a long time to get this guy right because he doesn't have a mouth or a nose. So you're kind of having to use references from online. And uh, I, I had like loads of references on the side. I really did like the one from the 1997 film uh, version of Spawn. Uh, the only live action film that I know of that was in cinemas. Uh, he had a really cool sort of look to his. I just wanted to implement a few more of my own style and techniques and designs as well as some from comic books and stuff like that. So it's not going to look exactly like the one from the film, nor the ones from the comic books. It's always going to have some sort of artistic flair that is my own stamp uh, or design on the character. And I think that's how a lot of people should should work when they when they have a well-known character that everyone loves. Uh, it's it's really cool to see it sculpted exactly like someone's previous work. But if you can add some of your own sort of influences and design choices into your concept, then you might be able to to make it look better. Uh, and it also gives it uh, a bit of a uniqueness to what's already out there. So now I'm just really with a really small clay builder brush just building up those forms a bit more just trying to try to smooth using this using the clay build up rather than using the smooth brush because when, when you use a smooth brush it's really there just to take away rub out erase uh detail that was not working it's not supposed to be used to smooth the whole thing otherwise you just get like a really soft and boring looking character if you use smooth brush sparingly it can work really nicely but when you start using it really really over the top then it just starts to break the, the concept that you're trying to create so now i'm just gonna sculpt some skulls that will go on to his uh, cloak which will be the lapels of the cloak uh, the little parts where it's connected and uh, using a sphere i then dynameshed it and it just started to sculpt the a skull shape onto onto them. Uh, these are really going to be not the focal point of the design, so I didn't spend a lot of time on them. But I put enough detail in there so that people can understand what they are, and 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 it doesn't pull away from the final image at the end. It's uh, just an added piece. Using the uh, H polish, damn standard, uh, and some clay build up, clay brushes, you can really start to create some hard surface type models as well, especially with the high, high uh, the H polish brush. It's really good for creating those hard edges. Just finishing off the skull, trying to get some more demonic looking version rather than a, a plain boring skull. And uh, usually using the H polish to finish off the top of the skull and then bring it into the <clears throat> spawn concept and placing it where the collarbone would meet and then just duplicating it and mirroring it over to the other side. So uh, I also added a chain using a chain brush that I found online. Uh, sometimes you you can't always, if you're doing concept sculpting, you can't always have every um everything created by yourself sometimes you might need to go online and find a brush someone else has made which will help you uh, to push out concepts faster and that's totally fine to do the to, uh, to do um especially when you're doing really quick concepts 
So now I'm just doing adding some details to the skin. Uh, first of all, I used a clay buildup and just created really basic lines around the face and, and didn't want to smooth it out. And then I took the dam standard or the, sorry, the, the dam standard and the crack brush. Uh, there's like a, uh, a brush with which you can use to create cracks. And I started to define some of those uh, face facial features a bit more and some of those lines a bit more on my character. Just building them up slowly. And now I'm just masking out using the mask brush the pattern of the uh, on the face using the uh, the face to then drive new topology later on really handy you don't have to stand uh, sort of sculpt it from scratch you can just extract what's already there on the face We're using a mask and then just detail that piece and it's, it's a very iconic look that spawn has and it's it's very difficult to get it looking right uh, i think i took some liberties and, and added some details that possibly aren't aren't on the concepts of uh, concepts or comic books of spawn but again i'm trying to create some something that i feel will work as a spawn concept so as you can see, I I extracted it and then I smoothed it out so that it's smoother than the the face, uh, which is going to be a bit more rough. And then I just went in and detailed it using the clay tubes or clay buildup, finding some of those lines again, and then going in with the dam standard and breaking up some of the edges around the masking mask so the longer you 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 sculpt the, the character the, the more you're going to get out of it uh, i have done ones that are very quick uh, that i find work well but if i'd spent more time on it it probably would have looked a lot better so just keep that in mind don't it, speed is not the key when sculpting these kind of concepts you want to get the basics down correctly first and then go in and start uh, sculpting details and stuff but yeah get the basic shapes correct first before detailing it that's the biggest thing i can say uh, when it comes to speed sculpting because 90 percent of the sculpting is going to be in the basic forms the actual detailing of your model will only be the 10 will be the last 10 percent uh, when it comes to these concepts so that's something to, to, to bear in mind when when sculpting uh, your concepts So now I'm just going in with the standard brush, a standard brush that comes with the brush, and I'm adding some wrinkles, wrinkle lines, playing around with the detailing of the head a bit more, trying to get that uh, skin texture looking like a bio suit on, on him, like a bio, yeah, bio suit, and uh, just emphasizing some of those extra lines and uh, going in with the damp standard as well and just digging in some more of those wrinkle areas and defining some of those lines a bit more
No, I wasn't too too worried about the back of the character, as you will probably only see the character from the front uh, or three quarters. So keeping the detail in specific areas like the face and the chest are more important to me than, than detailing the back of the head. And unless you're going to do a three uh, a turntable of your character uh, that you want to show it off, then there's not, not much need to actually sculpt stuff you won't see. So I'm just adding some different texture on the mask areas, like the mask, the, the white pieces that are going to be white, because I found it, it all looked like it was going too similar around the whole thing. So I just added some different texture onto that to, to make it look like it's a different part of the mask uh, of the exosuit. More organic as well. Okay, so now I'm going to start work on the cloak or the collar of the cloak. And what I did was I duplicated the, again, I duplicated the face and then I used that to drive the new topology that will be the cloak collar. So extracting it and extruding it and then using Damstan, uh, Dynamesh, I Dynameshed it. Uh, then it, I found out that didn't work too well. So I went back to the duplicate model and I deleted it. Then I imp I appended a sphere and decided to use this technique instead where I cut away the front half of the sphere or cylinder and closed the hole. And then using Dynamesh, I Dynameshed the model so that I could sculpt it in more detail and then I would Z remesh it later on to make sure the topology is nice and uh, correct. There's multiple ways to creating uh, models inside a ZBrush. It just you just have to think what you're trying how you're trying to create that piece and for me I'm a very very much a, an organic creature uh, modeler. So when I think of hard surface stuff it doesn't really it, to me, it, it, it's difficult to try and make sense of how to create hard surface stuff. Uh, this collar, like again, like I said, it, it was something that I started off doing one way and then decided, oh, it's not working this way. So I'll, I'll change it, uh, change direction and change it to a different stuff. It's all more of an organic um, ver a way of creating it. So, yeah, there's a lot of ways you can sculpt inside a ZBrush and get the the, to get the best results so i'm using a spiral tool just to break up those straight lines a bit more on the collar and just using simple tools like the smooth brush and move brush and damn standard i'm trying to just create some folds and wrinkles on the cloak And then uh, creating a sphere, I then put it onto one side, dynameshed it, and then using the move brush or the snake hook brush, I started to pull and push these uh, the sphere until it created more of a uh, cloak for the shoulders. And then using the pinch brush and trim dynamics and move brush, damn standard, I started to sculpt. Uh, clay brush and started to sculpt that collar around the neck a bit more and the shoulders a bit more just 
just using the clay build up brush to create some folds. And then I decided to make the collar even bigger uh, after looking over some of the concepts of Spawn. He tends to have quite a large collar, uh, sort of an overdramatic looking collar. So I decided to do the same thing with my model and add some extra shape to it and height. Now I'm just using the move brush to shape the collar, straighten those edges a little bit more. And then the dam standard to cut in some of those folds along the shoulder blades or the shoulders. I spent a little bit too much time trying to get these this cloak right when I could have done most of it inside of Photoshop and painted it inside of Photoshop. But uh, I I really just wanted to get make sure that the the model had a good looking cape and collar to it, so that it could speed up the process later on inside inside of Photoshop. This is probably the most, one of the most finicky type thing to, to do with this concept was to do the, the clothing. Uh, clothes sculpting can be very difficult to get right or make look right because of all the folds and directions of the folds and wrinkles. It can be quite difficult to make it look uh, realistic as well as sell the idea that it's cloth basically i think i'm just adding some of the final touches to it now and then it will be on to the poly painting and then after that will be the actual rendering using zbrush and then finally into into Photoshop. So currently I'm just working on some of these final sculpting passes on the model. Uh, once the clothes are done, I'll start to do some final touch-ups on the face and the skulls on the collar. Give it some texture noise or texture detail, just so that it's not too flat. As you can see, the folds on the cloak took quite a while to, to get right, to be more believable. And I am not a a artist who knows a lot about clothing and folding and folds and clothes, so it took me a while to, to get it looking good.
So now I'm just going around the skulls and adding some fine details or finer details using dam standard, just creating some of those cracks and defacing them a little bit more, making them look a bit more believable as well. Adding some surface detailing onto it so it's not too smooth. This will all help to actually sell it later on when rendering and using some of those matte caps to render the the textures with, because uh, it gives the also gives the light something to bounce off and and make look more believable rather than just flat and boring. But again, this is not focusing on those skulls. Uh, I don't want the audience to focus too much on them i wanted the audience to focus more on the face so just a little bit of detailing is fine but you don't have to go overboard using the rake brush is really good for making cracks as well it gives it's got this really cool way of working on the model to to give it a crack look as if it's a uh, rock texture. I'm just gonna detail the chain a little bit because it looked a little bit too much like clay. Uh, so I added some harder surfaces using the H polish and the trim dynamic uh, just to make it look more like a used chain. Now, working on the skin of my character, just adding some final details to it before going to texturing or polypainting. Uh, just giving it a bit of a rough surface. These are like the would these would be the classified as the fine details uh, on your model. It just breaks up that surface a bit more, and and I found this alpha actually on the ZBrush Central website. It's uh, I think it's alien skin or burnt skin and that goes really well with the, the spawn character with his sort of skin texture and then this one is just like a little polka dots it gives a really cool perforated paws uh, feel to your to your model like it's got a little bit of little paws all the way around the face and for the the cloak I worked with this brush uh, it was just an alpha I found online and I didn't want to have to go through the whole perfect sort of fabric look so I just used it with a stroke on standard brush and just gave the cloak a different texture to the flat smoothness that it did have now I actually changed that later on inside of Photoshop and I use another texture inside of Photoshop so it wasn't too difficult but it helps to read better when at rendering stage so now i'm just adding some poly painting uh filling those key areas but with it's always good to to fill your model with a, with a full-on color or uh, base color and then go in with a brush and start painting over the top rather than painting from uh scratch uh it's just really much more quicker to do it my this way than it is to do it the other way and uh, so my go-to brush is the standard brush with a color spray and a the brush alpha that comes with it is found inside the alpha section i can't remember what it's called but it looks like little dots uh little fine dots and this is really cool because like it comes out like a spray gun so you're kind of spraying your model and it also changes the color between um, the 
color you chose and the color that's on the model so it'll go a little lighter and darker between the light and dark to give you a bit of variation in the color so i'll use that brush for the majority of the time or if i need to do some real fine detailing i'll use just the standard brush with a, with a standard flow on it and it's just coloring that way And now I'm just going to do some transpose posing using ZBrush's transpose tool. And I know that I wanted to have my spawn character kind of looking towards the camera. So I wanted to rotate the head, uh, but not the shoulders, just the head. So it was looking like slightly towards the camera. Uh, this is kind of the main look that spawn does uh in comic books and stuff like that he'll kind of look underneath his eyes eyelids towards the camera and it's, it's really a, a strong quite a strong pose so it really works well for this character and it's not that was it uh not too much to do it's a little bit of a head tilt downwards and towards the camera and we're done and now we're going to move on to actually rendering this character so I have done quite a few videos on YouTube as well as tutorials that you can buy online uh, but it's pretty much the same way I do all my time-lapse videos I'll start off by positioning the light in a place that I feel it's going to work well with the render and for this one I wanted the light coming from the left and the shadows falling to the right so I found the best position for that light and once I'd done that, I had uh, I went ahead and I tweaked the rendering settings for the shadow. Also added ambient occlusion as well, and tweaked those settings. Now you're not going to see them in this video because it, it, it goes like pretty quick. But if you watch the long form video, you'll see me tweaking the shadow and the ambient occlusion settings before rendering, uh, as I'm doing now and you'll see the figures that i use those are typically the sort of figures that i use most when doing uh, these timeless videos uh, the, sh the fall off of the shadow just works really nicely instead of having that harsh shadow and then i added an extra light just to bounce off the side a bit more give it some extra values and now I'm adding the ambient occlusion. Again, this is the ambient, this is the settings that I use for the ambient occlusion. It's what I use all the time when doing ambient occlusion rendering. It just works really well. Now I'm just gonna well you didn't see it there, but I usually export those from the render um, passes. And then I'll go in and start using these mat caps. So the mat caps you can actually find on ZBrush Central website, or you can download them from my Art Station for free, or my Gumroad for free as well. Uh, I use them to help me compose or composite something uh, really cool inside of Photoshop. So taking these compositing renders and working with the final render to actually come up with a really nice finish to the model or uh, to the concept you're trying to do or the image that you're trying to create so I won't use all of them I'll just use a handful I usually use around 10 and then I'll take those into Photoshop and then what I'll do after that after I render those 10 from ZBrush I'll use a balloon uh, matte cap that comes with ZBrush and then I'll put that balloon to a black fully black and then go into the light settings and then start to uh, raise the intensity of the main light and then try to get some nice highlights 
rendered out using that blin so right now you can see I'm, I'm using the blin setting it to 100 default and then just grabbing some highlighted areas highlights from different angles to use inside of photoshop i won't use all of them again but i will take as many as i can into photoshop so that at least i've got something to work with later on and that's pretty much it so the last thing i did was i made an id map using the flat color and then adding different colors to the different parts of the model and rendered them out separately uh, but i will leave it there for now and i'll join you inside of photoshop where i'll show you how i composited this image so inside of photoshop uh, i have just imported all the different layers and stacked them in according to the way that i normally stack them when i when i do these compositing uh, stages inside of photoshop so if you wanted to see how i do that i have loads of tutorials online uh, which are free as well as pay ones where i go through how i stack these compositing layers up from zbrush and how i use them using photoshop but uh right now just going through each map cap that i rendered out and trying to find a nice sort of compos composition and render using them uh, i don't use all of them like i mentioned in when we were inside of zbrush but i try to to use as many as i can to help me further the design of my character. So right now, just moving along quite quickly, going through the highlights that I created and trying to find some good ones to use. Again, don't use all of them. Sometimes you can use uh, one part of one and mask out the rest and then add another one on top which will help emphasize the highlights of the character now i'm just going to add some of these uh, shadows and depth and ambient occlusion layers You're using the multiply and this is the color id map that i created just to mask out certain areas of my model or my image it's a really quick way of creating uh, masks and i can i can use them on certain areas that i want to to work with so if i didn't want to think on the whiteness of the face then i could just mask that out completely like i did there It's, it's a very long process, this inside of Photoshop. Well, I mean, once you get used to it, then you can really start to, to do it quickly. But uh, at this beginning stage of testing things out, don't be afraid to take your time inside of Photoshop and really try out all the different uh, layering styles that you can get. And using the map caps as a help to bring your image out better and just practice uh it's it's that's really much it i mean most of the work we did we've we've done in zbrush this is just making the final image look nice uh, or pretty or or try to to sell in it you know uh this is the fun part of the actual composition uh of, com of creating this this character so yeah take your time and just uh, test everything out try different techniques so right now i'm just adding the body to my character like i said i was gonna create i was creating a bust inside of zbrush uh if i was to create the whole character it would take even longer so i decided to just paint in some rudimentary colors to emphasize where the bust would be or the chest would be on my character as well as finishing off some of those cloak areas as well using just a standard paintbrush from my paintbrush set which you can find online and just doing some really quick and dirty paint overs
this is not an ideal way to actually create concepts but if you're on a tight schedule uh and you you needed to show this to a client let's say it's it's a lot quicker to learn how to, to paint stuff inside of photoshop than it is to to try and sculpt it all inside of zbrush so finishing off your model using photoshop especially if it's an area where the client's not going to look or it's not going to be too visible is going to be a lot quicker to do inside of Photoshop than it is to do inside of ZBrush. Uh, I wanted to make sure the focus of this was going to be around the face. So when it came to actually painting the Photoshop uh, of the body, I didn't actually worry too much uh, about the final look of the, the chest or the, the cloak uh, because I knew that wasn't going to be the, the focal point of my image. Uh, right now, just adding some different colors to the background. I knew that I wanted to go with green because that's kind of a spawn color. If you if you look at any of the comic books, there's quite a lot of green. Uh, it kind of it's in his eyes as well, so that would be. I thought it'd be quite nice to emphasize the eyes as well with the with the background. Now I added an orange layer, fill layer. And I put that onto a soft light and then I masked it out and added some more orange tones to one side of the face. Then using a, one of my standard brushes in my brush set, I just sort of painted, made a painterly style uh, gradient of the background a bit so it didn't look too boring. I do this quite a lot with a lot of my pick, uh, concepts. It just keeps it from looking too sort of boring. It gives it a bit more texture as well, as if it was a blurred out image at the back. Now just coming in and filling in those eyes with a, a fluorescent green or in, emissive green that he has and just detailing a little bit more around the cloak area just making sure that it's it reads it reads nicely basically and it kind of sells sells the overall image I do get asked quite a lot, of, quite a lot of times, why do you, why do you even bother doing anything inside of ZBrush when you can just do it all inside of Photoshop? And I guess people are correct that you can do it all inside of Photoshop, but I'm not the greatest sort of painter or concept 2D drawer. I haven't really spent too much time actually doing 2D drawing. Uh, I spent most of my time in 3D because. Uh, I wanted a job as a 3D artist, so I kind of the the 2D side of it took a back seat for uh, quite a long time. I am starting to try and get back into more 2D uh, drawing and painting, but it's difficult when you can't find the time really. And uh, yeah, so I use ZBrush because for me it's it's kind of like drawing; it comes second nature, basically. And uh, that's the reason I, I use I use ZBrush and Photoshop. And so it's a good skill to have. And now you can see I'm just adding some special effects by getting an image offline of some smoke and just adding them to the corners of the eyes just to sell that burning rage that sort of Spawn has. And you can see it illuminate through his eyes when he's angry. And just detailing the eyes a bit more. Adding some shadow around the uh, skulls. 
trying to hide them so that they're not so in your face. Then I used a gradient tool or gradient brush to add some more green to my, my image. But only in a specific area where the eyes were. And then I thought, you know what, I'm just going to fill the whole thing with a green instead so that the overall image has a tint of green to it. It's all about subtlety as well at the end of the day. You don't want to go overboard. It's it's not very good to go overboard all the time. If you can make things look very subtle and just use subtlety when doing the layer compos composition, uh, you, you'll find that your image will go a lot further. Like, don't be afraid to drop the opacity of certain layers or use a softer brush or a harder brush in certain areas. It's all down to your own taste, really, but uh, it all comes with practice at the end of the day. So right now, I'm just going along with a sort of wet uh, palette knife brush and just breaking up those edges along the cloak to make it look like they're more flowy, like in the films. Just those little attention to detail sections really help to sell the, the character a bit more. I added a, a soft light, green light on, on the edge on the right hand side as well. It's like a bounce light from the background. So bring in some of that colour from the background onto your model. It just blends it nicer. Now I'm just adjusting the actual size because I thought that the head was sitting a bit too low down so I moved it up a bit more so it was more in frame. And I'm just adding some final touches around the, the cloak with the paintbrush. And now I'm onto the adjustment layers. So the adjustment layers just are the last step that I do to my image once I'm happy with the look. So these just enhance the image a little bit more. And uh, you can play around with these a bit, uh, as much as you like once you get to this stage. So I, I normally start off with a level, bring back the blacks, then exposure, then the hue saturation, a vibrance. And then there's a some there's one called the color lookup, which is what you're seeing now, and this just tints the overall image in different colors, and you can sort of cycle through them all until you get to the one that you you like the most. And I think I went with this one. And then the final thing is to add a a sort of dust image from online, like particle dust, just so it adds some texture onto the image, as if there's dust flying around. And then add in some actual texture from a texture map or texture I found online to my model or my image, which I wouldn't be able to do inside a ZBrush or it would have taken a bit. I could have done it, but it would have taken a little bit too long. So it's always nice to come in Photoshop and manipulate the image later on using images you find online. It just adds to that detail that you might have not gotten inside a ZBrush. And the final thing I normally do is to uh, merge everything into one folder, merge the image, crop it, and then sharpen the image using the Smart Sharp. And also duplicate that image and then put a blur on the top one, a Gaussian blur or a motion, uh, motion blur. And then just paint out the sections that I don't like or I don't need of uh, with blur. So that I'm only focusing on the face. As you see now, I'm using a motion blur. 
Now I'm just gonna, just gonna blur around the edges of my, my image and keep the face crisp and sharp. And that's about it. So the only thing left to do is to add a noise layer, which adds a bit of graininess to the overall image and save it out. So this has been a look at how I created the spawn character or concept from my YouTube channel. And I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video very soon. Take care.